Hanging around, this is gonna be a fun show. Here we go. <laughs> everybody, Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics as we are every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And today we are interviewing DotWorks. I've got their camera enclosure in front of me I'm going to be showing off in a little bit. And I have with me Bill Ferris. How you doing, Bill? Doing great, doing great, Paul. Happy to be here. Thank you very much. Bill is joining us audio only today, so when we do the lightning round and in the interview, I'm going to show his website here. Um, so before we start, let me uh, let everyone know that you can follow us on Twitter at PTZ Optics, obviously, Facebook slash PTZ Optics. Every live show, if you like this show, you add $1 to our charity donations every week. We've donated, I believe, almost $15,000 this year to the Susquehanna Casa Helping Children with donate, uh, Get Adoptions. Uh, this last Friday was a really fun show. We interviewed uh, Philip Laurent from Go Easy Live, and he had his cloud-based video production solution, the only cloud-based video production solution I have ever seen before. Um, today we are interviewing DotWorks with their outdoor camera enclosures, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, using them for our PTZ Optics camera in broadcast solutions. And then next Friday, we're going to interview the CEO of Ziptonite, which is a WebRTC-based um, video conferencing system, which is super secure, and uh, it's a great, cool platform. So it's going to be interesting. Bill, uh, we usually kick this show off with a lightning round. Are you ready? Go for it. Let's see what we can do. Okay, Bill, um, I'm going to ask you, first of all, uh, from uh, coffee or tea? Yeah, that's going to be coffee, Paul. You got you to gotta go big or uh, <laughs> not go at all. <laughs> Are you uh, talking Actually, espresso. or texting espresso guy? Espresso, if you really need to know. Espresso. Yeah. <laughs> talking or texting? Uh, absolutely. You, want, you definitely want to uh, do the texting thing, mainly t because you can... You can be a little bit more concise in the way you communicate with people, so that's uh, that's that's where that's where it's at. Cool. All right. Are you an Android or an iPhone guy? Uh, that's going to be iPhone at this point. Uh, the platform is uh, just too refined to say no to it. So yeah, you gotta you gotta accept that. If you could travel back in time to to view twenty four hours of history unfold, when and where would you go? Uh, it might be the fall of Rome. <laughs> Ooh. You know, we got to see what we uh, one of the biggest democracies uh, unfolding in front of our uh, in front of my own eyes would be uh, maybe a little bit more educational and uh, uh, maybe some enlightening could be uh, could be seen through that, uh, that that period of time. I think that is a great way to go. Um, that, you know, everyone has their own uh, their own thoughts on that. I think it's so funny. I did not have. Thank you, Mike Lada, out there for saving me on the fact that there is nothing in the descriptions. Um, that is a good thing to know. Okay, so we are going to do a brief introduction to DotWorks. Will, why don't you go ahead? Who is DotWorks? We've got your website up over here. I'm going to show that off a little bit. Who is DotWorks? Yeah, let, let's talk about that. Uh, DotWorks, we, we manufacture camera protection systems. So. Uh, we've been in business for about 20 years now. We are located in San Diego, California, and we always have been. Uh, pretty much 100% uh, of the product is built and manufactured here in San Diego. So uh, we've been in the security industry and in the broadcast industry as a OEM provider uh, for uh, for many, many years. Uh, so we're, we're uh, constantly kind of pushing things and developing new housing systems so that we can get cameras into locations and into industries and verticals and things like that, that uh, um, pretty much no one else has, has been really uh, focusing on. So uh, DotWorks is a camera housing manufacturer in San Diego, of all things. So we, we do our best to compete against the overseas markets, um, but I think we really bring a lot of innovation, uh, a lot of 
a, a lot of uh, engineering to the table so that people's installs and uh, longevity and the reliability of cameras such as PTZ Optics uh, can kind of be brought to the next level as far as uh, as far as once it's installed and in, in, in the field for an extended period of time. So uh, let's do a, pre a brief product overview. So I know you do a lot of different things. Why don't we just go ahead and talk about those things? Like I know it's not just camera enclosures like this. You do a whole bunch of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So so the, the camera enclosures, obviously that's one part of it, but there's uh, inside these, these different housings, uh, there is temperature controls. Uh, there, uh, we have the ability, for instance, in one of our models, the Ring of Fire, which is uh, very, very popular because people really understand what ice and cold weather can do to, uh, to a sensitive electronic in, that's installed in the field. So we have a outdoor de-icing system for the camera. So for instance, if it is frosty and icy, uh, you don't want your camera to be actually having to see through icicles or see or not see anything at all in those in those very uh, hmm. trying conditions test, test. so so yeah the environmental is a big thing for us cool okay um looks sounds good um let's talk about these outdoor enclosures i already got a question in the chat about that um yeah. i'm gonna have to turn my mic down just a hair i think there's a little issue with it are the outdoor enclosures portable or are they meant to be installed permanently Yes, they, these are meant for long-term use in usually one location. Now, the, the portable side is a, is a great question, Paul, because we actually do manufacture a housing system that's uh, intended for vehicles or boats or, or, or places where there will be motion involved. But uh, generally, they're not necessarily used for uh, carrying around and, and setting up here or there. But people tend to take our housings and then make them their own Basically, uh, we're, we're providing uh, oftentimes a, a canvas for folks to come up with their own products. So, for instance, if you wanted to take that PTZ Optics camera and have that a mobile system, just, uh, just say for an event, um, there's room inside that housing to put a radio. There's room in the housing to even put battery systems or, or the recharge devices that are on the market now in with the camera so that, yeah, it, it can be set up on a tripod and it can be moved uh you know on a on a day-to-day -day basis hour on hour basis uh for special events so so there's just just almost endless amounts of versatility that we really wanted to give the dealers and the folks that are professionals in this industry uh so that they can they can make these systems their own and and uh you know use them use them for how they need to use them not just how we might think people are going to do these types of cameras Cool. So I've got a little um, video here um, I'm going to show about the outdoor enclosures. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the installation of these things? Yeah. So what you're seeing there, that's our D2 housing. That's a very, very popular model for us. Um, what you're, you're, uh, you're going to notice is that it's not just the camera housing. So people often confuse, oh, well, you know, there's, there's camera housings that kind of look like like a ball on a stick or on an arm or something like that. What you'll see in this, this little video clip here is that's a PTZ optics camera that's in the D2 housing. And there's seven different models. Like I said the, earlier, the environmental side on the inside there. So, so in this case, I think this is the heater blower version, but keep in mind, we have our ring of fire, which is our de-icing version. We actually have a cool version so we can remove heat energy out of the housing. Uh, we can so that's uh, actively cooled. We can get up to about 30 degrees differential between the inside and the outside of the of the housing. Um, but uh, back into that video clip, you you would, would notice, like I said, there's room inside. It's not just an arm or something that's supporting the camera. There's there's more of a, a boxier space in there to be able to add other devices. So you're uh, you're seeing our ring of fire there that's an illustration of uh, kind of how that ring uh, works from the inside view but that's a 65 degree ring uh, a 65 degree uh, uh, heater ring system so that like I said we have an in, we don't have any in, in, impedance from ice if it starts building up on the outside but absolutely there's so much uh, into the into the housings here and like I said the D2 is one of our most popular um, it's named after just uh, if anybody cared it's it's named after uh, the whole sport utility vehicle side of things and we tend to kind of align ourselves with the auto names and things but but the uh, d2 much like the h2 at and its time 
it just gives us a little bit more boxier uh, utility uh, on the inside to add things and, and bring more to the table uh, as far as what the camera systems can do outside of the traditional camera only uh, camera housing that we were competing with, uh, you know, in the, in the, from the far east. So this just brings new versatility, new function, uh, definitely more usability. And of course, with our environmental kits, uh, a lot more reliability and even more performance out of electronic over time. Yeah, let's talk about some of the options that people have to, that they should be aware of because there is so much that can go inside this like basic housing. Like if I'm looking at this basic yeah. D2 enclosure from B&H, it is $285, right? So yeah. there's obviously yeah. a lot of options that people have to go in there. Do you want to tell us a little bit about you know what the options are? Yeah, so so in the D2 format, because uh, when we're talking about pan tilt zoom cameras, uh, much like the PTZ optic systems, uh, they're going to be for the most part mounted into different geographic locations. So when uh, we talked a little bit about the the heating system, uh, the Ring of Fire model, uh, that uh, has a, a a single port of uh, uh, of ingress there for your your power supply. So you simply just hook up a single uh, a single power lead inside the housing and then our, what we call is our MVP, our multi-volt platform, actually steps that down so that you have the ability to power a 12 volt or 24 volt camera inside the housing. So we, uh, of course, we do our best with the uh, it's different environmental kits, the, the Ring of Fire, the heater blower version, the base model, which doesn't have any of that MVP features in it, but it's just the, it's just the encasement, the IP66, I'm sorry, IP68 encasement there. Um, and then uh, you've got a, we've got a solar version even, so we, we have that set up to be native uh, 12 volt DC. So if you did have a solar application where you did need a minimum amount of, uh, of heat energy uh, and a little bit more, uh, more versatility out of your batteries, the uh, solar ready version is very popular. Um, we even have a PoE version. Uh, so if you did need to run PoE, that's, that's possible. Um, we have uh, a, a tornado is what we call it. It's a uh, system that's been designed for high humidity type of conditions. So think about Florida coastlines and and uh, and the Caribbean and, and hot tropical type environments. So we do have that IP68 tornado model, which is just absolutely perfect for those those conditions where it's going to be a little bit hot, but it's not going to require the cool dome. Uh, so uh, the uh, tornado IP68, um, and it's designed to move air around the inside of the housing, not bring air from the outside or anything like that. So it's 100% sealed, uh, very, very useful for, for marine applications. Considering the D2 is, is a thermoplastic system, uh, we don't have rust, we don't have corrosion. Um, and then uh, in that uh, system as well, we have our, the, uh, the fans moving air around the, the camera to keep hot spots from happening in those those hot afternoon suns. So beside these things, besides like heaters and blowers and fans, are they putting actual yeah. like devices inside of these boxes since you have so much room? Yeah, so that's that's the the best point I think, and, and that kind of sums up what the D2 and actually all the Dotler products are about, is that there's room on the inside of these very sealed, very weather tight. Uh, very uh, fortified, basically, uh, housing systems so that you can add other products. So people are putting point-to-point uh, -point radio systems. They're putting fiber modems. So if you did have a fiber run that you needed to connect to, you don't have to have uh, external boxes on the wall or on the pole or anywhere else. So you would just simply run power to your D2 housing, and then you would mount. Often uh, there's, there's mounting brackets available on the inside there, so you could just uh, mount those those devices uh, either with our brackets or some folks actually make their own or um, you can even put the DIN rail on the inside there and and, and mount different routers and different wireless systems so uh, yeah uh, I can keep going on with the what folks are doing but there is uh, so much built around the D2 it's it, it's just very modular in that case so people are putting like I said fiber modems they're putting point-to-point -point radios they're putting um, microphones, even microphone systems, audio systems, which of course we do have a, a outstanding mic uh, system for outdoors. Um, so they're able to kind of get all that in one small, easy to hang housing system so that it's all sealed, it's all temperature controlled, and it's a single box install. So they don't have, you know, an octopus of different wires and things going from one box to the next and having to troubleshoot and do all that if anything goes wrong. Uh, so it makes the job 
much faster to install, but it makes it look a lot cleaner, a lot more engineered, um, even lighter weight if that matters. So if you're doing a pole mount, for instance, you can't have a lot of weight on a, on a, on a traffic pole or you don't want that vibration. Um, the, the D2 is, is definitely designed to be a simple build it, hang it once, um, and then if, uh, if you ever needed to get into it, it even opens from the bottom while powered up. So you can actually see LED lights and things like that on the cameras and on the other devices all, all from underneath. So you don't, uh, you don't have to take it down even if you needed to add something or check something. So it's, uh, it's just a tremendous little product that just people love worldwide. And there's just so much versatility. I can probably go on for hours about what, what folks have put inside these, but it's, uh, it's just, it's made for that. So. Cool. And you can even power it over PoE. I mean, that really takes the icing on the yeah. cake. Why don't we talk about yeah. the integration with PTZ Optics and show people exactly what they're going to need to buy to get a PTZ Optics camera outside? Oh, yeah. That's, and that's the nice thing is that really you, you pick your model. So if you're talking about a PTZ Optics camera, you have uh, two choices uh, uh, mainly with us right now is that you have the D2 model or you have the D3 model. Now that D3 model is a little bit bigger, um, and uh, and why it's bigger is just because once we designed the D2, folks said, hey, I want to add a, a computer, I want to put an encoder, I want to put uh, multiple radios, I want to put a cradle point router, they, you know, all the different things that can go inside. We needed to give uh, options for just going super big and, and getting more product in there if needed. So, so the first thing you would look at is you would say, I'm going to take a D2 or D3, D3 housing, and right out of the box, the D2, D3 housing has the mounting plate that fits the PTZ optics. So, it, you know, you barely even have to look at the instructions there because it's just uh, all the hardware is included. It bolts right together, and uh, it's uh, you know you, you center you center your camera, you get it as low to that lens as you can, and and it's off to the races as far as that goes. So, so this um, is all the they one, need right here. Yeah, so yeah. this D3 heater yeah. blower <laughs> enclosure for five hundred dollars. Yeah. That's all they need. Yep, yep, and that's the D3. So that's a little bit bigger than the D2. So that, that comes with that MVP, that multi-volt platform. So you simply just hook your power up to the MVP, and then you take the, the power from the MVP right to the, uh, right to the camera. So MVP will take in that 110, uh, 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 210, uh, 240. So you, even if you had different power uh, in the field, you're, not gonna get, you're basically not going to get caught um, once you have that, uh, that MVP uh, in the box there, you're not going to, you're not going to need a different part. It's all designed so that it's, it, it takes, uh, some of that guesswork out for some of the installs. So for instance, if, uh, you know, we, we, we know, we know what it's like to be in the field and we know what it's like to uh, not have all the right parts and all that. So we, we really wanted to make sure that this was versatile enough so that right out of the box, you're going to have the right product that's going to do the right job without having different part, part numbers and models. So. The only thing really in a PTZ ops, optics integration you would need to decide is is where's it going, right? Is it are we going to be in a cold, icy environment? Great, get the ring of fire. Are we going to be in a temperate environment like most of the U.S. is? The heater blower is what you're what you're going to want because that's going to keep the the camera safest uh, for most temperate and climates where we have you know a little bit of cold, a little bit of heat. Uh, we we got it covered with the heater blower. Um, if you do want to just build your own from just from the base up and not, you know, not have the electronic on the inside and you're on a budget project, the definitely the base, that's, that's that IP68 case with the, with the camera bracket. So that, that's, uh, that's also a, a way folks uh, tend to go. Um, but again, if uh, you're dealing with hot climate, you need the cool dome. You're going to want to keep the camera at a, at a, a, a much cooler temperature to get its reliability up because you, you know, if, you know, growing up in Arizona, you, you can't have things out in that type of heat for very long without them breaking. So the cool dome is the go-to for those hot desert environments. And then again, uh, back to that tornado. If you are going into a, a hot, hot uh, humid climate, the tornado is, is kind of where it's at. Um, well, I really so appreciate like I said, this quick uh, overview because I think within 20 minutes, we've kind of gone over your product line. We've shown people exactly yeah. what they need um with the ptz optics camera i'm going to roll the credits because we're hitting we just hit 20 minutes and if you can uh we'll yep. stick around and we will um stay around and answer any questions that people might have let's do it
Okay, we are back. I am here with Will Ferris. He's on audio, so for video we are showing his website. Um, but we do have him here. He's the CEO of DotWorks, and he's telling us a little bit about their uh, location in San Diego, um, the products that you need in order to get PTZ Optics cameras out into the field. I see uh, so many of our dealers and customers using these to get the, these PTZ Optics cameras out in new arenas for sporting events, things like that. Um, we had a couple questions, Will, and the first one that came in, um, here's another one here. Could you mount the enclosure to a clamp that could clamp to a speaker or a light tripod? Yes, yeah. So um, the, the enclosure is designed to be mounted onto a pole, but there is a pole mount adapter system that is, uh, is readily available. That's called our BRMPM1. That is ready to go, bolts right on to the, the D2 or our D3 housing, and then it can go down to a pole size of uh, uh, just around one inch or so. So if you were going into a smaller diameter pole, you just need that pole adapter piece, that's all, and, uh, and then you're good to go with that. So, um, yeah, people, people do mount that for, for events. Um, they sometimes make their own, their own mounts, uh, pole mounts. Uh, like I said, down to one inch or so, we're, we're good on that pole mount adapter. Interesting. Okay. Um, you've answered my main question, which I wanted to leave this show with, was what you know uh, options do my customers have to purchase an outdoor enclosure? You answered that for us. You answered for us what types of you know options they have depending on the climate and area of mainly the United States, but the rest of the world. Um, we had a couple questions. There was another question that I asked you earlier about uh, outdoor enclosures actually being portable. That is kind of interesting to me. Um, so do you actually have outdoor enclosures that are put onto cars and things? Absolutely. So we, we have a, a complete line of different products. Uh, I would recommend looking at our BASH or Ballistic Anti-Shock Housing. Uh, that's a very popular uh, product for uh, smaller cameras. Uh, but that is a, uh, it does have a vibration uh, system that's built into it so that, that housing itself actually almost levitates around its support mechanism so that we do remove some of that uh, high frequency vibration that you might see on vehicles. So it just brings more longevity to the camera itself. But yes, our bash housing is made for that uh, and it's just perfect uh, for, um, for moving around if needed. Interesting. Um, well, it looks like, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't, I think that it's, it's fairly straightforward here. Um, I know you do offer a lot of different things here. It looks like you can buy right off your site. Um, quick question I always kind of ask people, um, do you actually work with resellers and integrators? Yeah, so, so we're, we are mainly in, uh, in distribution. Um, okay. We do a lot of OEM business. Uh, we do a lot of, uh, 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 the dealers will tend to, purchase the product worldwide through some of our distribution groups. So they, mm -hmm. they will purchase uh, uh, through pretty much every distribution company that is involved in security cameras uh, and some okay. broadcasts. So like you mentioned, B&H is an excellent, excellent source for us. Uh, but yeah, we are uh, sold worldwide right now. Um, we do have uh, a complete line of mounting systems. So I, I touched a little bit on the pole mount, but there are different mounts for these. There's corner mount adapters if needed. Uh, there's arms that kind of extend the, the camera out if you needed that. There's even angle correction mount. So if we are mounting it to a, a surface that's not 100% vertical, uh, we even have that kind of figured out for you. So in the PTZ optics world, you've got to get that camera uh, directly on the horizon. And if you don't and it goes left and it goes right, it's going to fall off that, uh, off that level uh, very, very quickly. So we do have a a system called our angle correction plate on that uh, pole mount adapter that people just love. Um, and then, you know, I hate to even mention it, but it's it's so simple and so ridiculous, but it, it's it's very, very needed uh, when we're mounting cameras outside. It, and it's that keeping the camera housing clean is a big, big thing. We even have a tool for that. That's called our dome cleaner system. Uh, people just love that. Um, getting the cameras uh, clean or keeping that, that lower bubble clean and, and uh, especially for production use is uh, I can't emphasize enough how, uh, how important it is uh, to make sure that there's no, uh, you know, there's no dust or anything on the uh, outside of that, that bubble end. So we have that cleaning kit people just love and that, that goes a long, long way 
because you don't even have to get on a ladder. You just push it right up against uh, the, the housing from down below and it basically cleans in like three seconds. So great, great tool. Let's do a final um, explanation of this video here. Um, from what I understand, and I, I'm more of a sales and marketing guy, so I don't get, I wish I kind of got my hands more dirty than I get to. But um, it looks mm -hmm. as though, I'm going to try to pause this video at the right place. They have it mounted to like steel um, strut. I don't know if that's what you call that. Yeah, that's called a, that, that's a unit strut. So that's just unit strut. That's a very universal way to mount. Um, as opposed to just going into the block. So yeah, there's, there's four bolts on the back of that housing that, uh, that in the instructions, there's a template. So you just line that template up, make sure that, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna be horizontal on that. So you're definitely gonna use a bubble level, um, when you, when you get those four holes drilled so that you don't have any, any migration of, uh, of, uh, anything kind of tilting in the wrong way. And then, yeah, it's an easy four bolt mount. And that's what they used here. Uh, uh, the unit struts, a very common piece. Um, but the more important thing is how you want to run your cables. You always want to have the cables lower than the housing. You never want the cables coming down uh, from high up and then into the housing, no matter if it's ours or anybody else's. You, you do need to have a drip loop, um, and that's, uh, that's all part of that. But we use, uh, like I said, this housing is IP68, so if you wanted to put that underwater for, an ex you know, for a, a period of time, you could. I'm not going to suggest that, but uh, as long as you're – you installed it right. If uh, if you ever needed to, this is definitely ready for uh, for being underwater, and I don't recommend that. But it is a IP68 housing, so another little unique feature that people like to like to know about because that just means it's airtight and it means it's watertight. Sounds good. Well, I think that's all the time we have today. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and tuning in to our show. Um, Will, I appreciate having you. Oh, there's your website. And everybody, thanks for watching. Have a good holiday. We do have one last yep. show next week. I will try to keep the rumbling of the audio down. I think it's because this cable is moving around. Apologize. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, guys.